Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am Daniel Goodemo. Sorry about that, folks. I know I seem a little scrambled here today. I've had a few days off, so I bear with me as a host. I've had almost a week off. Yeah. I'd like to thank John yesterday for going solo as I'm doing uh, reconnaissance work down in Rockford. Um, I would like to thank all the great fans down in Rockford. And uh, I won't voice my displeasure against the ones that made me very angry at the end. They were just intoxicated. Um, you know, uh, intoxicated sports fans can be toxic to the game, the sport environment, but um, it happens to all of our bases. It's not any, anything that doesn't happen. So yesterday, Rockford uh, was an amazing game. Uh, Askarov deserved better. I'm, I'm just giving my opinion on yesterday's game before we get into the show and I do our in, intro and everything because I felt like I left John hanging yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Regula ran um, at, at Askarov, and uh, I, I was standing right above it at the moment, and uh, I, I I pretty much didn't blink pretty much the entire second and third period because I was just focused. Um, and so was Askarov, uh, stopping 37 of 38. Uh, he earned himself first star of uh, the night yesterday for the AHL, so uh, kudos to Asky. Uh, that's a good... Uh, Good start. Um, but we are from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Danny Goodo. Over there is John. John, how are you doing? Personally, I hope you're doing better with your health, health than I am. I'm doing all right, man. Just been tired all day. I, I was about to say, um, outside of us having the same issue today, which was being tired all day. I called you this morning. If, uh, we had our morning meeting. I fell asleep. <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> I passed out. It was just like my body's like, nope. <laughs> so yeah, it's it, it's pretty exhausting when all that goes on, and and it, it, you know the road trip. I haven't done one since last season, um, with with a newborn and all that. It it was a lot. So alrighty. So today the Preds took on the Lightning, and I'm gonna let John jump into it. <laughs> All right, so shots on goal. The Predators outshot the Lightning 36 to 32. In the faceoff circle, the Predators were better 55% to 45%, but still pretty close. On the power play, the Predators went 0 for 2, the Lightning 1 for 2. Each team had nine penalty minutes. The Predators out hit the Lightning 45 to 35. Both teams had 16 blocks. The Lightning had 16 giveaways to the Predators' three giveaways. All right, as far as that goes, I mean, the Predators pretty much played the better evenly in every other statistical category, but they dominated in the takeaway department, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Forsberg had three takeaways. Jankowski had a takeaway. Uh, Dita Ryder had a takeaway. Cole Smith had a takeaway. Uh, Gradlin had two takeaways. Parson had a takeaway. Uh, Jano had a takeaway and Duchesne had one. So, you know, and that's just forwards on defensemen. It was Ekholm who had a takeaway. Lazan had one giveaway. Parson had, had a giveaway, which cost us a goal. Um, Granley had a giveaway. Um, so yeah, it, it it's it's not the uh, greatest situation. Also, would like to make everyone chuckle. So here we go. Time to make everyone laugh. Today, the uh, in other news, uh, does everybody remember the uh, Ryan McDonough trade? Um, I, I just thought I'd get into it because this do it does have a reflection on this. Uh, Myers is in Syracuse. And Mishmash just got sent to the ECHL. And the Preds have a hurt defenseman for the next two to four weeks, from what right. we've seen. That's you. So, um, it's it's just one of those situations where, uh, um, 
I, I, I honestly am not sure who came out on this on, on, on top, but let's jump in this game again a little bit. Uh, scoring in the first was uh, Braden Point, his 12th with an assist from Ian Cole, his 7th, and Eric Cernak, his 4th. Then Corey Perry ugh, um, s- scores his 4th with an assist from Stamkos, his 17th, and Hedman, his 11th. That was on the power play. That was all under three minutes. At the 10.51 mark, Mark Jankowski scores his third with it being unassisted and a shorthanded goal. Um, Jankowski just outworked them there. Uh, good job on that, uh, Janko. Um, then, uh, way to get your first point, Alexander Carrier. Big moment in the game. Uh, Alexander Carrier ties it. Um, Carrier has been kind of sluggish lately. Uh, finally got his first point of the season in his 22nd game. Um, I don't know what's going on, but I, I would like him to go back to Yossi. He's just not producing with Ekholm. Right. And and uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't think Fabro's a top-line defenseman, but that's the only way they're going to trade him. Is him proving he can play with Yossi. Right. And, 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 and this is where it's getting like, okay, um... You know, at that point, it's like, okay, tie game. And then the third period happened. In the third period at the 214 mark, Braden Point scores his 13th of the year, assisted by Sorelli, his third, and Kucherov, his 27th. That made it 3-2 Tampa. Then at the 7-10 mark of the third period, Nicholas Paul scores his 12th. Assisted by Stamkos, his 18, making it Tampa Bay 4, Nashville 2. Then uh, Brendan Hagel scores his eighth at the 1540 mark of the third period, assisted by Sergachev and Elliott, and that was a shorthanded goal. Elliott with his first point, um, former Wisconsin Badger Bill uh, Brian, Brian Elliott. I keep calling him Bill Elliott for some reason. I'm <laughs> thinking of NASCAR in the 90s. Uh-huh. Um, but here, here's, here's where, where, where Nashville screwed up. This is not a, the, the power play goal was, was a play, was a, was a, how do I put it? The power play goal in the first was a coaching error. Too many men on the ice. That is always going to fall on the coach. Too many men on the ice means you called for a bad change. Uh, Cole Smith and Cal Foot got into a fight. Might go check that one on hockey, hockeyfights.com to see how that one went. Um, unfortunately for me, I was unable to watch the game as I was not feeling good. I wanted to make sure I had just enough energy to be in the show today for you guys. I missed you all. <sighs> but I did watch the uh, – I've watched all the highlights and – Caught some of it. Uh, I turned it on and caught the first two goals and went nope. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, three stars of the game were uh, Steven Stamkos. Uh, he had uh, two assists. Uh, second star of the game was uh, Brian Elliott. He uh, Hang on a second. He stopped 34 of 35 with a, or sorry, 34 of 36 um, with a 94.4 save percentage. Um, What a night for him. On the other flip side, Sorrow stops 27 of 32 with a 84.4 save percentage. Um, Yossi minus two. The crop list makes its return. Yossi minus two. Gross minus three. Uh, Duchesne minus three. Parson minus three. Grandla minus three. Um, everybody else was fine. Those are the guys who were getting beat. Um, your scratches were Cody Glass and Illy Tolvin, uh, for Nashville. Hayden Flurry and Zach Bogosian for Tampa. Um, your referees were Gord Dwyer and Pierre Lambert, CJ Murray and Jonathan Deschamps. Uh, Deschamps was the uh linesman. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Head coach for Tampa Bay is John Cooper. Different spelled. One spelled like John, 
uh, our, our co-host, and one spelled like John J O N. All right. Uh, before we get into our next video, which is going to be tomorrow's game, I wanted to kind of do a little breakdown on that one. I wanted to have a discussion with me and you, John, about this because it is right. it is a topic of 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 something. I, we talked a little bit about it in pre-show, like prep. Um, at what point does the bad coaching decisions of not playing glass after glass had a great preseason, and you kind of iced him after? getting back from the global series over there in Prague. You know, his momentum's gone. Right. So now, now you have like two options. It's play him until he gets it back, trade him. Tolvanen has no momentum at all. He has that look of somebody get me out of here. Right. I, I mean, it, 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 it's, mind-boggling that and, and don't get me wrong I'm not saying I have nothing bad to say about any player on the Preds team but when you start Cole Smith or McCarron mm -hmm. over glass and don't Covenant, and you're hurting for goal scoring, and one's a playmaker, and one's a goal scorer, wouldn't you kind of consistently think that that's a problem? And and that comes down to coaching. He does the lineups. Right. Tolvanen hasn't played... Oh, when was the last time Tolvanen played? Oh, come on. Oh, please bear with me, folks. I'm dealing with some tech issues. Ugh. All right, Ilya Let's take a look here. Ilya Tolvanen has played in 13 games. And the last time he played was November 19th. So no, almost three weeks. Yeah. And he had nine minutes of ice time. Let's see, what was the last time Glass played? It doesn't want me to know. <laughs> My uh, mouse keeps going and floating over him. Ugh. All right, glass last played. On the first. Okay. Uh glass has been kind of an uh 14 to 16 shifts, the averaging any there. Uh the, the December 1st, 14, then November 19th, 15, uh or November 29th, I'm sorry, 15, and the 19th, 15, 
Um, he had 16 shifts against Arizona on the 21st of November and then 23 shifts, or I'm sorry, 14 shifts against Detroit. Uh, and then he had, uh, like I said, 15 against Anaheim on the 29th. Um, Glass this year, statistically, if it wants to work, speaking, has three points with a minus one. Okay. He also only has two penalties total. Or one penalty total, two penalty minutes. At what point of not playing these guys, you're talking about a youth movement, you're playing AHL players, like, I, I mean, I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but you know, guys like Parson, and I don't think he was fully ready for a full-time NHL gig. I think he was good for a couple games and then he needed to come back. Right, I think so too. I I, I truthfully think that. I um, At what point is guys like Smith, you know, send him back? Um, You know, because you guys could use Kiefer Sherwood, you guys could use Tommy Novak, who both have been on a hot streak right now. I'm talking about swapping players. Well, we're streaking, and your guys aren't. We're swapping players so that they we can get them going for you. Right. You get what I'm saying? I'm talking about getting them back going, getting them back, you know, in a in a winning environment. Get them to get that going, and then you send them back up, and then you wait till they crush them again. Because right. that seems to be the new thing in the NHL. Uh, AHL players go up and then get squashed. Right. Um. With this game, mm, Nashville <sighs> falls to fifth place in the wild card race. With being. Three points back. Right. Um, Colorado is falling. Um, that is to be expected. Um, I've heard rumor that Landis Cog will be back within the next two weeks. And the kid it'll be out two to four for them. So right. Nashville, now's your time to be jumping at it. If if you're looking to Try and climb the standings right now. Now's your time. There's a lot of banged up teams in the central. I know we're banged up too, but right. This is an opportunity. We got to take it. You know, you got teams like Colorado who are on three game losing streaks. Um, even over there with with Minnesota, as inconsistent as they are. You know, and, and, and from the looks of it, Dallas is going to lose too. Winnipeg's going to win the win the division from the looks of it. I did not have them winning the division when I started the season. I had them towards the bottom like I did Arizona and, and Chicago. Um, the worst team in the league at the current moment is still Anaheim, if I remember correctly. Yep. The worst team in the league is the Anaheim Ducks. Shortly followed by the Columbus Blue Jackets. Yeah. Who got walked on by the Buffalo Sabres. The Buffalo Sabres are a plus nine with a losing record. Yeah. Um... You no, know, so that, that we're we're in this situation. So back to what we were talking about. What what would you think that it's going to take to kind of push this situation to where Hoyle or Hines or somebody's getting canned? <sighs> do you think it takes a monumental collapse, or do you just think that if we don't make the playoffs, he's gone? I think. They're committed at this point, so I think if we miss the playoffs, then he's gone, or both. Um, would I like to personally see something different? Yes. Um, I feel it's time for a change already, but I don't make those decisions. 
Well, neither do we, neither do I. None of us make those decisions that falls on the team. It's only our job to critique what the decisions that they right. make. And, and, and here's the thing. Uh, I, I personally believe that, you know, and here's the thing. I'm not talking about firing Poyle because at no point do I think that Poyle leaving Nashville is a good idea. I think that you got to keep him inside your organization somehow to keep it moving forward so that people know what the lifeblood of what they built in Nashville. You want somebody to come in and go, okay, this is what we have. This is how we're going to build with it. Right. And see, that's the situation. We have to find a team builder. I'm not talking about a guy who just puts players on a roster and goes here, make it happen. Because that's what it seems like Poyle did this offseason. Now, um, as far as that's concerned, w- w- depending on where Nashville is at the trade deadline, it is going to be very interesting to see what they do. Oh, yeah. Because they do have some guys that have trade value. They have some guys who have no trade value. They have guys who want to be here and guys who don't want to be here. When we find out, you know, like Fabro, we know he wants out. We know that Tolvin wants out. Right. This isn't like, and and here's the thing. I think Fabro's got his eyes set on being the next Roman Yossi, but he wants to overshadow Roman now. Right. And I'm sorry, Roman's a Norris candidate on any roster. You're not outshining him. I'm I'm just saying, you know, I mean, there is a difference between having like a guy like Makar with, you know, um, with what Colorado has. And Colorado may have to actually use um uh Gerard as trade bait because they desperately need people up the middle. Uh like they need centers up the middle desperately. So they may actually have to move a big name defenseman in order to get that. Right. Um so there's there's that part of it too of like we're 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 already watching and, and looking and seeing what other teams need. We're looking and seeing what's going on. We've already been preparing for the dra- I've been preparing for the draft. <laughs> mm. um, I'm pre- planned on having a very easy off season because I want to enjoy my time this summer like I did last summer. Yeah, you know, so uh, there's that as well. Um, well, well, so I mean. Do you think if they start to fall towards the Arizona Chicago style of things, I would think it would get ramped up. Right. Yeah. You know, the 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 clean house kind of ramp up. But then at that time you also have to ask the question of do you want to wait it out and see what your options are during the offseason? Right. Because if there comes a moment where Carl Taylor could be snagged by another team, there is a chance you just go, Hines, I'm sorry. Right. Because Taylor's done a wonderful job. He's create, com- committed here. Uh, yesterday, I saw some people saying that, you know, um, the Admirals had taken a lesson from Hines' playbook about the penalties. And I happened to look into it, and a lot of those calls were bad calls. Um, if you are, are, are an NHL fan and you consistently watch the NHL, but you don't watch the AHL, the AHL uh, officials, I'm sorry, sometimes act like the NH uh, the NFL replacement refs. If anybody remembers those guys, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's pretty much you. We get the NHL's scrub refs, pretty much. Um, and it, you know the guys who are are biased, the guys who don't call it straight up. You know, the guys who don't know how to control things. Um, I say this because I've literally seen it. I watched Nermi get tripped yesterday, no call. I watched, um, uh, what was that, uh, Kiefer Sherwood get cross-checked in the back and get, get hurt and, and that stuff. I, I just don't understand why why the officiating in our, our league is so bad. All yeah. right, speaking of our league, we've got five minutes, five minutes. Um, tomorrow we play the Hartford Wolfpack for the first time since 2003. So yeah. head-to-head stats in the previous season, nothing. Previous season, current season meetings, nothing. In the last five years, obviously nothing. I will give you an update on on the Wolfpack. They are one in five in their last five games. The Admirals are three and two. 
Um, their Hartford's best players are Andy Walensky. He's a defenseman for them. He has four goals, seven assists, 11 points. Uh, Tim Gettinger. 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 Uh, is uh, their second best with six goals, four assists, 10 points. Um, uh, Will Kule. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to look that up, but Kule. Uh, he has five goals, four assists, nine points. Turner Elson, for those of you Admirals fans that remember him, he played for Grand Rapids for a period of time. Um, he has two goals, seven assists for nine points. Uh, Ty Emerson, he has two goals, five assists for seven points. And I'm sorry, uh, Turner Elson has two goals, seven assists, nine points. I stand corrected. Uh, the Admirals' top points getters at this point that are on their active roster at the current moment are Tommy Novak with Nine goals, 12 assists, 21 points. Luca Vangelista with four goals, 13 assists, 17 points. Uh, Marcus Nermi with seven goals, nine assists, 16 points. Uh, Keith Sherwood, nine goals, six assists, 15 points. And Cole Snyder, nine goals, five assists, 14 points. I would expect Cooley to be in that after the um, right. season that uh, Askarov took in the last game. Um, then the Admirals take on the double header. Uh, if our show is a little late that night, I apologize, that will be completely on me. So, uh, I, I, apo <laughs> I apologize, as I've said, I've been I'm a little rusty, I'm a little, I'm a little worried about what's going on with Nashville and how things right. happen, and you know, um, if, if, if it continues, um, and we continue to slide. Um, I mean, all it takes is like three or four more losses, and say, right. you know, St. Louis could pass us, and and then we're sitting at the seven mark, and at that point, you're just like, uh oh, right. Nashville seven three and two at home, but on the road they're five and seven, right. You know, so. They play well at home. It's on the road. That's questionable. Right. Um, so just a little anomalies and stuff like that that we've been noticing things that need to be talked about. At what point do you look at it and go, Nashville called the wrong coach? They called the or the wrong GM to fire. They called the Titans instead of the Preds. Um, because the Titans just fired their GM. Uh, simply over a trade he made. Um, so there's that as well. Um, uh, there was there was one other thing I had, but I can't remember. Um. Oh yes. Uh, Wednesday. Uh, the. 14th, the Admirals are back home. Uh, so uh, we'll be back with those those games as well. Um, for, so Admirals fans, if you're in the local area and you want to go, uh, it's a winning weekday. If they win, you get a ticket to the next weekday game. Free charge. So uh, nice little promo they have there um, as well. So see y'all later.